Today I'm dropping 10 rules to live or die by as an options trader. I've been doing this for almost 10 years and I've had insane account runs, thousands of percentages, and they could be even higher if I knew what I knew today. Also, I've had huge blowups. I've had huge single day losses from these mistakes that I learned, which would have helped me avoid them in the future. So for all those people getting started out with options, this video could be a game changer for you. All he asks you to subscribe and like if you don't want to miss the future content. So the 10 golden rules of options trading, we're talking about it right now. Rule number one, sell an option if it's down 50%. This is my stop loss, the max stop loss I'm always looking to respect. Once it drops past 50%, it's very hard to have a winning trade ever because the chance of profit goes down dramatically. So whenever I hit that limit, um, I stopped bag holding, I stopped praying because I knew I was wrong, I knew the entry point was bad, and I knew I should just get out because here's why, here's the math on it. Let's say this option right here is at 247.5 and the chance of profit in this trade is minus 100. So it's 66 minus 100, it's 34%. So out of the gate, if you bought this option, you have a 34% chance of making profit. That's not great. Now watch this. If this option loses 50% of its value, it's going to be closer to this level here where the chance of profit goes from 34 to 25. So the chance of you winning in the trade dropped dramatically. Now, let's say for some reason you were out of the money, you know, your chance of profit can be 17, 10, 7, and 1. 1% 1 chance of making money. So obviously at that point, you know, you wouldn't be buying options. You'd be at zero. So as you can see, the further and further you go down, the harder it is to break even. And so once you go down far enough, for me, it's a 50% loss. That's when I get out. Rule number two is never buy during earnings. And I think people try to go for it. They think they can predict it but they're always going to lose in the long run. You can get lucky once, you can get lucky twice, but after years of doing this, the chance of you hitting a winning play on earnings is super slim and being profitable in the long run because the thing you have to beat is time decay, IV, and the expected move. So every time there's earnings, the option chain gets more expensive, sometimes two to three times what you would normally pay for an option because they're expecting a larger move from earnings. So right here is Chewy. You can see the break even point for a Chewy option before earnings is a 10% move up. So if you, if you bought calls, you need to not only be right about the bullish move, but you have to be right about a move over 10%. So 10% is a lot. So they're, they're very competitively priced. For you to beat what the market is pricing in is not going to happen for the long run because they're very efficient at doing this. And for the most part, it falls underneath this price, which means you're always going to lose money. And here's the other reasons why buying options during earnings is 100% gambling. Good news can be bad. Bad news can be good, mainly because of forecasts. So if you, bad, if you have bad numbers for the quarter, but the forecast next year is good, stock runs on the forecast. Let's say you have good numbers, but the CEO leaves, stock drops on the CEO news. But you have a huge share count increase. Maybe they're releasing new shares, selling them on the open market, dilution. Investors don't like that. No matter what the numbers are, that's going to trump it. So they're going to say that stuff. They're going to release that stuff typically after the earnings call, around the earnings call. So that's why I don't touch this because it's there's so many factors you can't control. So many things that gets released that's going to push the stock in different directions you can't predict. So again, we do have a $7 supply and demand course link below. That's something that has been game changer for me in my trading and entries and exits, and I hope it can be for you. That's why we priced it so low. Hit the link below to grab that. Number three, that third rule is hard stops on zero-day options because guess what? You're at work and you're like, hey, I want to go for this zero-day play. Just quick in and out. No problem. Boom, you enter. And then boom, they just raise the interest rate. You played right before the Fed was talking and the, the option is 70% down instantly. 
your stop loss was mental, a mental stop of 20%, you blew past that by three times the amount. So if you cannot have a stop loss in on a zero day, should not be trading zero days because the moves on a five minute chart or just after a news release are insane and they could really blow up your account. So if you if you have all your money in a zero day, that's the riskiest thing you can do without a stop loss. So it's super important to understand that. And I know a lot of people, they'll fail to put in stop losses for a very long period of time in their trading and it's gonna catch up to them. One day, boom, it's all gone because of lack of discipline. Rule number four is leaps on mega trends. This is something I wish I did in the past 10 years. I tried to do it recently, but we're in a recession, so I uh, did not nail this at all because the trend has not started for, for the bulls. So basically, I'm looking for a bullish mega trend, and here's the criteria for that, and here's why it's so important. Blue cloud, green cloud, on the weekly and the monthly chart, pretty simple. And what that looks like is you have the weekly chart with the Ripster EMA green cloud, the weekly chart with a Ripster EMA blue cloud. When those two clouds are correlating with the same sentiment, that's when you wanna buy and hold things for months or years because the trends in the market stay if, stay up in, in, the, in, this, in this momentum for a very long time. You look at like 2020 to 2022. This move from the green cloud all the way to the red cloud here was easily 5,000, 10,000% on leaps. And a lot of stocks like Square, all those growth stocks, way more than that. We're seeing uh, people become millionaires from leaps, especially the people who bought Tesla. So that is something I wish I knew. I wish I did. I was so scared of recessions and we're in one now makes me fear even more but in the past i mean every time the market ran to an all-time high you're too afraid to buy you're too afraid to invest but those trends stay trends for a lot longer than people expect and you're if you're the person that's always waiting for the recession you're going to miss out on months and months and months of easy passive income because the best part about these mega trends is how much you don't have to think you just buy and hold and when you have leverage the returns can be astronomical so for in the future when we flip red cloud to green and then yellow cloud to blue i'm going into leaps for a small amount of money that is kind of a risky trade but has good risk to reward because i'm looking to triple quadruple it in the next three to six months so that's something i wish 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 i knew number five I wish I started this earlier. I waited so many years to just start selling options. And so if you can learn selling options, you're gonna be better for it. Just learning this in six months, I got lucky. I'm gonna say it's luck. This doesn't happen all the time, but I went from 40K to 200K screenshots, account statements can prove this. It's been on the channel for years. I've done this with selling options and buying stock one single stock. It was super lucky. But the point is the selling options aspect was a huge profit maker for this strategy. At one point, I was making $30,000 um, in a week selling options with this account. And so I didn't have to do much. I didn't have to think too much. I just took advantage of time decay, took advantage of the passive income aspect. And the reason why selling options is also great is because credit spreads can allow traders to take advantage of support, resistance, time decay, and passive income. So I'll show you over here, but if I go to the spreads channel on our Discord, um, we have a 13 and one win rate so far on our spreads. So all we do is, you know, we look for good risk to rewards and we take advantage of good levels, technical analysis, and you can have a very high win rate because options are inherently decaying assets so you don't want to be buying them uh, if you want to mix in some strategies to sell them but so you can have that great win rate because the win rate can be as high as 70 or 80 percent just for selling the option like i showed you over here before in the first slide these options are all selling options per chances of profit so you have a 60 70 80 90 percent chance of winning of winning because you're selling it 
you have to subtract the difference from 100 to see your chance of winning because you're buying it. You're never going to get a 70% chance of winning unless you go deep in the money, deep, deep, deep in the money. So if you're buying anything at the money, out of the money, you're better off selling. And if you compare that with technical analysis, you'll stay in the game longer, you'll crush trading longer. So for everyone out there who's playing earnings, playing zero days, you're just not going to be here in the next three to six months more likely than the person that is selling these things. So the person that's selling these things is going to be here for three to six years in the game and most likely having success. Lastly, for the selling stuff, rule number six, we have four more rules, but rule number six is don't sell on bear trends because when, whenever I sold options, more importantly, covered calls, cash secured puts, or just buying stock, those three options selling opportunities, they stopped working this year because we are in a major bear trend. So that was something I just realized recently is you have to have a way to recognize the right time to do these strategies. And for me, I'll even mark this here, covered calls and cash secured puts, they just don't work in bear trends. So don't do those. And buying stock, that's the easiest way to lose the most amount of money is just going uncovered holding stock. And here's why. So what the chart looks like is green cloud, perfect for leaps, perfect for stock, perfect for the option selling strategies we're talking about. Once you hit a red cloud on the weekly chart, you can see this happen for SPY. We did not, 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 not hit a bullish run for longer than, let's say, four weeks. So green cloud here, green cloud here, but still the market has not bottomed. The market has not ran consistently, mainly because number one, red cloud. Number two, now we have a yellow cloud and the yellow cloud is a bearish one. So for us to have great long-term trends, which really help option selling strategies, you need those correlating clouds like we talked about earlier. So for me, I'm not selling options as aggressively. I have to be precise timing the entries and the exits. And for the most part, I'm staying in cash because nothing is telling me this bottom is in and this is the time to start buying the market. So if you do want to trade with us for 15 days instead of seven, hit the link below. You'll be able to attend live streams, get my indicator and see me trade every single week. Rule number seven. This is something I do with swinging, something I do with option selling, something I do with scalping. Whenever I'm looking at the option chain and people are always wondering which options to buy, I always just go one to two strikes out or one strike in. Basically this green line here is what the price is for the stock right now. And so if you go one strike above for calls or puts, you'll be in the money, at the money, slightly out of the money, and I don't like to go further than that, mainly because of what we talked about earlier. The further you go out of the money, the lower chance you have of making money. So the one strike thing has helped me out the most. And there's one other reason for this is because if you go one or two strikes out, you take advantage of gamma, which is where you make more money per dollar move. So the big moves in the market are going to really help out out of the money options grow faster. So you can see right here, um, these options, these puts for SPY today, uh, the out of the money ones are up 370%, the at the money ones are up 500%, and the in the money ones are up 640%. So the ones that move the most are the ones that are, they're now in the money, but they were out of the money before. So this before was a couple strikes down from the, the price what it was yesterday. So it's important to see that uh, the ones that move the most were out of the money and slightly out of the money, just a couple strikes. And then here, you start seeing that percent change drop. So those are the, those options yesterday for SPY were in the money options. So 396 were in the money, at the money, and these ones were slightly out. And that's why they moved aggressively more than um, the ones higher. So there, there's a certain opportunity loss if you go too far in the money when picking your strike prices. Rule number eight, funny enough, get off Robinhood 
what are you doing? You know you shouldn't be on there and you're still on there. So I, I do not put more than a thousand, five thousand dollars on Robinhood. I just use it for messing around really. But when I had ten, twenty, forty thousand dollars on Robinhood, I'd consistently lose money from getting in, from getting out. It's too slow. The process of picking the strikes, the process of opening the app to load, it just all cuts down. And if if you add on a five second delay every trade, and it could be even high as 30 seconds for Robinhood, that could be you could be missing two percent a trade. And if you're going to trade for 10 years, 2% of trade adds up. 2% of a 100K is $2,000, I think. So $2,000 times 1,000 trades is insane amounts of money. And for me personally, Robinhood used to just shut down in the past. Like the platform would crash. You couldn't get on. You couldn't trade certain things like AMC some weeks. Like they were not helpful for investors or traders and it really cuts down on how much money you can make. So for me personally, I like Thinkorswim, I like TradeStation, I like Tastyworks. Uh, those are my go-to platforms because they help me get in and out with ease, which again, the faster you can do something, the faster you can make that money, get out, save that profit, or take that loss because it all adds up at the end of the day if it's not quick. Rule number nine, always be scaling. This means when you buy an option, buy a couple. Not a financial advisor. This isn't financial advice, but this is what I learned. When I buy a couple, I can scale out and pay myself. Because here's what happens. We took a trade on, uh, what was it? Uh, donut, Krispy Kreme. We took a trade on Krispy Kreme. It went 30% profits. Boom. Scale out, lock in some profit. Did it hit 50%? No. Did it hit 100%? No. So I'm taking a loss on some of those contracts, but that loss is not as bad because we already locked in profits. So at this point, I might be breaking even, but I have the potential to hit insane profits if the trade went in all my zones. And you can adjust this. You can play with this as you would like. Basically, like if you have 10 contracts, maybe take off seven at the first level, three at the next, and maybe you don't go for the 100% level, or maybe you do three, three, and three. That's gonna be up to you and your strategy, and that's how you maximize your money trading. You figure out what is your scaling opportunities. So scaling has been something that's changed a lot of traders' lives, and it's helped them be more profitable on trades that didn't run a 1,000%. They can still make money, and have stop losses for the last contracts and maybe even have the last winner, the last profitable contract go even further than they thought. So instead of a 100% win, it goes five because you have the ability to leave one on to run. And last rule is the lethal times to buy the options are gonna be the first 30 minutes, the last 30 minutes, and the days where the big news are released. And this has been way more apparent this year because of CPI and housing and oil and the Fed interest rates and the Fed just talking to talk. Those news events have wrecked intraday trades, intraday scalps, even swing trades, completely changed the momentum and crushed traders. So you have to know what's coming out. Right now, it's super, imp- super apparent, super important right now. So the big news stuff, those are lethal times to buy before that. After those news events come out, it's actually very awesome and very easy to make profit as a trader. But the first 30 minutes, a lot of chop, a lot of volatility. You get in in the morning, let's say it's the first two minutes, don't have a stop loss, moves too quick, you get wrecked. Or first 30 minutes, you don't take profit as quickly, you're on your phone. It's just, it's a tougher time to trade. And the last 30 minutes, if you're looking to scalp the market, you, you might not be able to get the move in time. You just have a small window to be correct, which is always harder to make money. So if, if you're looking to swing, I personally like the last 30 minutes to swing, but I'm not looking to scalp the last 30. I've ran into a lot of trouble in the past doing that where 
Uh, I was in a zero day contract in the last 30 minutes and the time decay was just insane. The option just went to zero way quicker than I wanted it to and I was actually right about the move but I couldn't beat the time decay. So I learned a lot of lessons trading over the last eight years and hopefully these help you have higher highs and higher lows so you can trend and grow as a trader in the markets. And again, if you wanna trade me for 15 days, hit the link below, it's a long time. And if I can't help you on the markets in 15 days, I would be shocked. Lastly, if you wanna watch a video on our best options tutorial for everyone who wants to learn options A to Z, I'll put that video to the right of me. Peace out, have a great week traders.